Hello, this is Vivica Williams, and you're watching Head to Head. Over the past five years, Ukraine has been persistently moving towards an ambitious goal to become one of the top investment destinations in Europe. And as part of this plan, last year, Ukraine rose by five positions in the Doing Business rating and is now at 71st place. To explore problems and future aspects of the Ukrainian business climate, we are joined in the studio today by Robert Basili. He's an Australian businessman, investor, and philanthropist. Robert, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. And you've been in Ukraine since around the Revolution of Dignity, or sometime after the 2013-2014 uh, event. And what have you seen uh, in your time uh, change in Ukraine? Or what did you uh, see before you came to Ukraine and, and you've seen now uh, that makes the country uh, worth investing in? Mm. Okay. Well, I think we acknowledge that there's been quite a few reforms being done. Um, has it been enough? Probably not. Um, but I can see that. I, I think one of the great things that Ukraine is doing is storytelling. Mm -hmm. I, I think now it, when you travel the world, you speak about Ukraine, they understand what's occurring. There's been some success stories in the IT sector. Absolutely. Um, and I think the word is getting out. I, I still think we should storytell much better, but I, I really felt the storytelling is, is really cool. And what do you mean by storytelling? Give us some examples. Well, s storytelling is not just let's invest in Ukraine, but let's understand the history of Ukraine. Let's understand where we want to go and how we're going to do it. And I really feel that at the moment, Ukraine is doing that really well. And tell us a little bit about how you've uh, come across the, the stories you've heard about Ukraine and what in, intrigued you about uh, the investment environment here. Okay, well, um, to be frank with you, so I first started investing in 2004 during the first revolution. So 2004, 2007. Um, so when Maidan had started again, I'd already had some experience in what's occurring. Um, but now like, we're seeing like, reforms with nafta gas, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, we're seeing, um, I, I think, the biggest success story is the banking system. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's just recently won a transparency award for one of the most, or if not the most transparent banking system in Europe. I yes, yeah, and, yeah. It's, and people are talking about it around the world. I, I was, a few months ago, I was in Armenia, uh, and the banking system in Armenia is quite robust, um, but they'll... You know, giving compliments what's occurring in Ukraine. Oh, wow. And what else have you heard about Ukraine in your travels that also let you know that there's some changes going on here? Mm, generally, um, th th there are like small strange things, yeah? Like it's, uh, I know investors that have been coming to Ukraine for many years um, and pre the revolution, um, many people could not speak English. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, it, they're quite simple things. It, yeah, it, absolutely. Especially when there's a foreign investor coming in, they want to be able to speak to someone that can actually speak English. Yeah. And this has been a, a major change. And, you know, I've been here in Ukraine for uh, over or like eight years now. And there's definitely been uh, what we see the pre and post revolution um, uh, thought patterns, the way people interact with the country, with well, outside of the country. And I guess the visa free uh, regime has had a big impact on uh, improving people's contact with Europe. And mm, mm, completely, completely. Oh. So, um, you know, one of the things with the investment, it's not just the idea, but it's also the relationship selling. So now with the visa regimes, with people speaking English, um, there's much more ability to connect. Wow, and that does make a big difference. As you're saying, that comes into, you have to be able to connect. It's about, as you said, telling stories and, and, and bringing a heart uh, to a place versus just some statistics. Yes, correct. And what fields are you seeing, um, what directions here in Ukraine have caught your interest or and you see other investors being interested? Mm, uh, definitely the, um, the energy sphere, the agriculture sphere as well. Um, but I'm seeing people getting quite interested in space technology, uh -huh. Yeah, um, which no one's really speaking about at the moment, or not in the media, but the, there's a few investors interested in space technology and aeronautical engineering. Mm. So this, are we seeing a lot in Dnipro, which used to be kind of the big yes. place for space development here? Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I would imagine maybe the aer aerospace industry connected with that or, or not too much? No, it is connected. It, it is connected. And there's, um, so um, we know in Ukraine, there's a lot of, um, what's the word? Mm. There's a lot of intellect yeah, uh, in this sphere. So, uh, and I've been hearing a lot of topics about this the last probably 
eight to 12 months, mm -hmm. just quite recently. With, with the, uh, particularly with the space. With the space, right? yes. And what are you hearing the, the, the conversation around that? Mm, basically, um, there's great intellect here. Uh, it's easier to invest. Uh, it's not perfect, right. but it, it is better than it was a couple of years ago. Uh, and like, I know there's some serious discussions occurring. Oh. And uh, what have you seen uh, that um, needs to be improved? And of course, we know that there's uh, previously there were significant problems with the business climate. However, it has been uh, improving since the revolution. And what are you seeing that still needs some little tweaking or, or some major overhauls? Mm, no, I think tax reform. Mm -hmm. Tax reform is, is the biggest thing. Yeah, it's, it's the legislation of the tax, the tax laws uh, in Ukraine. They need to be completely overhauled. Yeah, um, because we've got to understand that you know, Ukraine, when it's looking for investments, is competing around the world with other countries. Mm -hmm. And I still think tax is it's one of the biggest obstacles in business. So what specifically? Can you give us some uh, specifics of what could uh, walls that businesses can come up against when they're when they're having to look at the taxes? Here. What's, I mean, simple things such as you know, VAT refunds. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, yeah, with um, uh, refunds being delayed or not being paid. Yeah, this yeah? has been. A, I do remember some time ago there were several million uh, in arrears with paying yes. out that. So it's kind of a very slow process. Yes, and, and when you're running a business that's very dependent on cash flow. Mm -hmm. You know that's uh, that's probably the, going to be the biggest thing, but certainly the uh, the tax reform will be the uh, it's the, I believe is the biggest issue for Ukraine. And uh, also, what about when it comes to things like customs? Um, my view, well, look at the moment, the businesses that I've invested into aren't going through the customs procedures. But based on what I know, uh, customs has got a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But there still is problems. No. So, so it's not perfect, but it's certainly much better than where it was three or four years ago. And the process for um, uh, businesses coming when we talk about the actual personnel, the actual process of getting a business started, uh, what have you seen in that sphere? Um, I, I would say that's probably the next biggest challenge in Ukraine. It's uh, having um, the top managers. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lack of top leaders in Ukraine, you know, and we're going through this transition where we have got the current leadership is, let's call it um, Soviet Union style. Right. And right. we've got the new generation that's coming in. Um, but that's one of the biggest challenges. It really is finding uh, the top leaders in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like uh, it's like the generation is still quite young, yes. the generation of leaders, we, we, we see that they're still a bit too green and young for leading at this point. Yes, and, and I think as an, as an investor, that's probably the second biggest issue. Mm -hmm. Beyond reforms, the next thing is, is finding not adequate scientific or qualified people, there's plenty of that, there are just a lack of top leaders and top managers. Again, we can talk about that being a problem around the world, but in Ukraine, it certainly is a problem. Um, and uh, tell me about, now I have some questions, Should you travel a lot, and they say you've traveled a lot, as you said, to Armenia, and you, I know you have some Armenian heritage. Yes. Um, so what, you talked a bit about the uh, banking system. Mm. What other comparisons do you see between the two countries? Mm. The, okay, the, um, I, I think Armenia and Ukraine, are, they're quite similar, but yet quite different. First. Mm. Um, just the market size is, is very different. I mean, there's only 3 million people. Um, Ukraine's that's the, and that's the number of people in the capital, just in the yeah, center. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um, center, right. So, um, but one thing that I was surprised in Armenia is how strong the um, banking system is. But I think today, uh, the banking system is on par with Armenia. Uh -huh. um, the, uh, I, I think he, English is spoken much more. Um, but that's probably, besides that, I mean, um, that's probably the only similarities that I see. And uh, one last question for you. What are you, uh, you know, everyone always asks, what are you predicting for the future? What are mm. you seeing? Uh, of course, we don't want you to uh, give away. Of course, you're not going to give us away all your secrets mm. of where you think places are to invest. But what do you see uh, in the nearest future, in the upcoming, uh, where Ukraine may excel or some places that are going to be the best interest for investors? Um, uh, uh, as a, the the, uh, the space technology, right. uh, I think a lot. Of the, um, they're not looking at. at the, they're just starting to look at the sphere. Uh, I think there is going to be. Here's a small prediction. Um, there's going to be a problem in the IT sphere. 
in, in the next two to three years in Ukraine. Well, uh, what specifically do you mm, think? Because well, we do well, know well, that... Yeah, well, well, IT is such a big component of the economy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially outsourcing. Mm. Uh, and because it's very dependent on Europe and the US, and there's some issues occurring there, um, what I see is in the next couple of years, this, this fear in Ukraine is going to shrink. Mm -hmm. It's going to shrink. And what we see uh, is, because that is a big concern, I've heard this from people in that sector, is that they want to get away from being outsourcing to yes. actually creating and being creators. Do you see that moving fast enough or is it still... Um, it, I mean, there's been a couple of success stories like with WhatsApp and uh, a couple uh, of projects. Pet Smart, lots of yeah, different ones. That, yeah, that I've heard, but um, there is just not enough of that, yeah. Um, but that's what I think... Um, so I would say the space technology is really where people aren't looking at, and I'm quite robust on that. Um, agriculture, well, we all know agriculture is quite big. And um, land reform is going to play a major part in that if they can get around to opening the land market. That's yes, uh, and, and if Ukraine can um, survive the turbulence the next three years, uh, I think then real estate mm -hmm. will, will start to be something that's quite interesting for people. Right. Well, thank you so much for bringing these insights for us today and for coming on. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. That was Robert Basili, an Australian businessman, investor, and philanthropist. Thank you very much for watching UATV and stay tuned for more.